Right now, we are going to test out the FX3 versus the Black Magic Pocket Cinema 6K camera. Now, I want to find out which one of these cameras is the great to the We're going to do a ton of different tests to find out which one is the best cinema camera for your budget. Let's get into it. For the first test, I wanted to see how both of these cameras performed in various natural lighting conditions. So I can judge them based off of color, skin tones, and overall image quality. Now if you take a look at the images produced by both of these cameras isolated, I think both of them produce really great image quality. We actually really didn't notice much of a difference until we put both of the images side by side. Call me crazy, but in my opinion, looking at both of these images side by side, I personally think that the 6K Pro, to me, just look better in terms of skin tone, color, and overall image quality. In my opinion, the 6K Pro consistently produced a deeper, richer image quality. And I was actually really surprised by that. Where I really noticed the difference in the two images was in the skin tones. Right out of the camera, it felt like the 6K Pro produced almost like a, a realer, sharper skin tone than the FX3. Now, with that being said, I'm sure that you can really dial in the FX3 footage this is just throwing Rec. 709 over the top of it and comparing both images back to back. And this is my personal opinion. But in terms of overall image quality right out of the box, I mean, see for yourself, compare both of these images. In my mind, the 6K Pro just looks a little bit better. And another huge benefit to the 6K Pro is that it has built-in ND filters, which helps you dial in your exposure with just the tap of a button. However, the FX3 doesn't come with built-in ND filters, so we added the new K2 filter system from Freewell. What I love about this particular piece of gear is that it's an all-in-one system that includes every kind of filter that you could think of, including ND filters, polarizers, gradient filters, mist, and streak filters. At the heart of the K2 filter system is this holder that attaches to the front of your lens. And once you attach the filter holder, you can start to add the magnetic VND filters. The K2 comes with a 1 to 5 VND and a 6 to 9 VND. And of course, if you want to add a little creative touch to the shot, you can quickly add a mist filter by just opening up this top latch, sliding it in, and now I have a diffusion mist filter. By far, the best part about this system is that it's super lightweight and it makes changing the filters really simple. Now, as we were testing different ISOs, I noticed that both cameras did a really good job at highlight recovery and, and neither camera really had an issue producing noise in a well-lit environment. All right, so we just shot with the gimbal on both the FX3 and the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. I shot on the FX3, my boy over here shot on the Pocket 6K, and I'm gonna tell you what I think about the FX3. I noticed that it was pretty easy and lightweight on the gimbal, and it was really easy to set up. And then having the ability to have that autofocus following Alex throughout the shot made it extremely easy. Now, I'm not a gimbal guy, I'm mostly a handheld guy. Alex is more of a gimbal guy, but I felt like it was a lot easier to get the shot. And again, me not really using gimbals or me not being used to using gimbals, I felt like I was able to get a really nice clean shot. Now, Alex, what was your thoughts on the Pocket 6K? Well, I mean, the other face is really nice. The only thing I really didn't like is that it was just very blocky. So for when you put it on, on gimbals, like you kind of like reach the end point of it. So you kind of have to scoot it out so it doesn't hit like uh, one of the motors. The other thing is you have to set up the follow focus and that takes some time and you know, like actually adjusting it and like hitting the end points and everything. It, it was a little hard, but I liked it overall. Was it hard to rack focus with the Blackmagic Pocket 6K? So I think it was just a bit hard because you know, like uh, when I run the FX3, I'm just focusing on getting the shot with the Blackmagic, like, you kind of have to focus on getting the shot, getting the focus in there. So that's kind of like, it took away from you like actually getting the shot. Yeah. If you're a one man team, that sometimes can be hard. But with FX3, I feel like you can just rock it on there and you can yeah. get for it. Dude, I felt, like, I felt like it was super simple to just throw the FX3 on there. And again, I wasn't the one balancing. I watched Alex balance it, but I was like, he got it done in like two seconds versus the Pocket 6K, which took some time to get on there. And then like it started vibrating and then he had to 
you know, balance it. So if I have to choose a winner for the gimbal challenge, it definitely goes to the FX3. It was super simple to be able to like get my composition with Alex and then nail the focus because I'm not worried about racking focus. I'm not worried about like anything else besides getting the shot. So inexperienced handheld user on the FX3 versus someone who is experienced on that gimbal with a Pocket 6K. Here are the results. test out the low light capabilities of the FX3 versus the Pocket 6K. We all know that the FX3 is an absolute beast when it comes to low light performance, but can the Pocket 6K stay within reach? We're going to find out right now. Check this out. So as you guys can see in these shots with the 6K Pro, there's a good amount of noise in the shadows and because we had to drop the aperture all the way down to 1.4, we had to try to get as much light into the camera as possible. So nailing focus was next to impossible. If you notice a lot of these shots are out of focus and anything else that we tried to shoot outside of the light and outside of getting a ton of light into the camera, it was just completely useless. I mean, in my opinion, there's no doubt that the FX3 is an absolute beast when it comes to low light capabilities. And in my opinion, this is really where this camera shines and what makes it an incredible running gun camera, especially for solo filmmakers or documentary filmmakers when you're in a lot of situations where you don't know what the lighting situation is gonna be or you can't set up a ton of lights or frame a shot. You kind of have to just roll with the punches and you're in whatever situation that you're throwing yourself into. So the fact that this camera is able to perform like this at such high ISOs makes this a really incredible camera and probably one of the best cameras for documentary filmmakers or solo filmmakers. And now that we have all of the real world tests out of the way, I think it's important that we start breaking down the specs of both cameras and compare them side by side. The 6K Pro has a Super 35 sensor and the FX3 has a full frame CMOS sensor. The 6K Pro can shoot up to 6K at 60 frames, while the FX3 only shoots 4K, but it shoots up to 120 frames. Now a big one for the 6K Pro is the fact that it shoots 12-bit B-roll and the FX3 shoots 10-bit S-log. And I will definitely tell you guys that while I was color grading these shots and having the ability to use B-roll definitely helps dial in the image. And in my opinion, I found it a lot easier to color grade the B-roll footage than the S-log footage. But again, don't take my word for it. I'm someone that is a Blackmagic user and I have a pretty good understanding of how to color grade B-roll. I'm not really much of a Sony user, so the fact that I don't really know how to color grade S-log or I'm not used to color grading S-log footage, could definitely play a part in this. The 6K has a dynamic range of 13 stops while the Sony claims to have a dynamic range of 15 stops. But I have to say while I was taking a look at this footage and while I was color grading it, I didn't notice the difference in the, the Sony having 15 stops and the, the Pocket 6K having 13 stops. As a matter of fact, it kind of felt flipped. It kind of felt like the 6K Pro had a higher dynamic range than the Sony FX3. But again, that's just my opinion. And you know, feel free to drop some comments down below if you guys have anything to add to what I'm saying or if you guys had a similar experience or a completely different experience, I'm open to discussion. Now the in-body stabilization and the autofocus features of the FX3, in my opinion, is absolutely huge and could be the tiebreaker between these two cameras because if you're a solo filmmaker or a documentary filmmaker or if you're someone that's just getting started, it makes this camera extremely easy to use. Well, that's that friggin' stabilization in here is wild. Someone could pick up this camera and get cinematic shots if they just have a basic understanding of lighting and composition. You really don't need an assistant cameraman or a focus puller. And then that in-body stabilization just makes the footage a little bit more stable. I noticed that, especially when we put like a 50 millimeter on the uh, 6K Pro, the footage is pretty shaky if you're trying to go handheld. But I was going handheld on the FX3 and I got some really stabilized shots. So that is definitely something to consider when you're thinking about you know, comparing and buying one of these two cameras. With everything considered, with the real world tests and looking at the specs, 
I think both cameras are awesome in their own way. But if I was to simplify it, in my opinion, I think that the 6K Pro gets an overall better image quality. And because it shoots 12 bit raw, I think that the image quality is better than the FX3. But in terms of comparing any other category of these two cameras, I think the FX3 has this camera beat. The fact that the FX3 has in-body stabilization, it's a smaller lightweight camera, it has amazing autofocus, and most importantly, it performs really, really well in low light situations. I think that if price had nothing to do with it and both of these cameras were the same price, I would say go with the FX3. But that's definitely not the case. The FX3 comes in at just under $4,000 while the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K comes in at $2,500. And if you're a beginner just starting out or you're looking to buy a B cam or you're looking to get into the world of cinema cameras and buy your first cinema camera, a $1,300 or $1,400 price difference could make or break your decision, especially if you have to buy a lens or a microphone or a light. There's a lot of things to consider there, but most importantly, out of all the aspects that you have to consider, the most important is what style of filmmaker are you? If you're the type of filmmaker that makes documentaries or you're in a lot of running gun solo filmmaking situations, I would consider the FX3. I think that's more suited for the solo filmmaker, for the running gun guy, for the guy who's making documentaries. However, if you're looking for the highest image quality and you're gonna be in a lot of controlled situations. I think that the Pocket 6K Pro is just a little bit better when it comes to image quality and the kind of colors and tones you can get out of this camera. But again, that's just my opinion, guys. I'm, I wanna leave this open for discussion. If anybody is an FX3 user or a Pocket 6K Pro user, you know, drop some comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you guys are trying to buy one of these cameras or are interested in buying one of these cameras and you wanna have a discussion, again, drop them in the comments down below. I'll give you my real opinion. I try my best to get back to everybody who leaves me a comment. I'd like to thank you guys for stopping in and talking about these really awesome cameras with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces.